there's this um, pull in the church. We use grace so much um, at the foundation. It's the core of our faith yeah. believers. And yet uh, we get stuck in that performance-based Christianity, the shoulds, uh, the formulas. So talk a little bit about um, why grace is such a better motivator than the guilt and shame messages uh, that maybe many of us grew up in our own um, families of origin or just um, the voices in our head. You know, I'm no expert, but I'm pretty fascinated with this topic so much so that I would call my ministry Grace Laced and I would write a book called When Strivings Cease. But the reason why I'm fascinated with this is because I look around and I think, why is it that even in the church, not just out there in the world, but even in the church, why is it that we think grace is enough to save us from mm -hmm. hell and to eternal eternity with Christ? Why do we think that grace is enough to save us, but we think we're on our own for the sust sustaining and the, and the going on every day? And so in some ways, we act as if grace is just that get out of destruction ticket but we forget that grace is the ultimate way that god brings us to himself and makes us more like him and so i look around and say why is it that the church is just as addicted to self-help and self-improvement and a whole lot of personal striving we feel like we're lacking we're not enough moms even in the church constantly feel like i'm not the right woman for this job i'm this i'm that or my circumstances will never be, you know, and I, and I just stop and think, okay, I struggle with those same things too. And so what's, what's missing. And I, I'm convinced that it's because one, we're kind of Bible illiterate. Sometimes yeah. we don't actually go to the word of God. We go to ideas or what, maybe it's that we hear, listen to a podcast. We go to Instagram and just read a quick graphic. And that's the entirety of what we really know about Jesus. And if we're not really spending time in the word and understanding what it is that Paul's teaching, especially let's say through Romans and through Ephesians and Colossians, what is it about grace? Why, why does he take the time to say by grace, you have been saved? Mm -hmm. Not, it's not your work. You don't, don't boast. Don't try to convince God that you're worthy of this. It's not because you did some great thing. And uh, when we look through the entirety of scripture, we recognize that it's always been always been human nature to try to strive and to earn your way to God, to prove to him that you're doing the right things and you should deserve some better circumstances. And it's always been God's way to say, despite and in spite of your weakness, I will pursue you. I will make a way. I will part the, sea, the, the Red Sea. I will be the one who makes it possible for you to, you to return to me by the blood of Christ. That's all him. And I think I just want us to not get tired of saying that to one another and to our children, because the moment that the gospel starts feeling like it's a VBS thing, oh, you went to Sunday school, we did the VBS thing, it's done. Now let's talk about the real things, like how do, how do you make sure that you're dating appropriately? That's a really good topic to talk about, right? How do you make sure you have self-control? Those are really good things to talk about. But if it's not woven with the message of the gospel and the grace of God, they're just going to be more striving, self-inflicted improvement plans that don't hold any lasting change in our lives. Mm -hmm. So my hope and my prayer is that just as parents, it might start with us that we might return to the gospel and say, okay, I want to be in awe of the grace of God once again, because that's what's really going to change me and ultimately transform my kids' lives too.